Like Q and I will be it's uh Nichi Nichi Nichobi. Today is March nineteenth, two thousand twenty three here in Pacific California. Twelve miles south of San Francisco. <clears throat> Just fall up to tomorrow. So the shrimps let me try to zoom in, have been acclimated with the drip style. And I'm gonna try to introduce them to their new 5.2 gallon facility here. This is a batch that I picked up yesterday. Um, accidentally found these little suckers. Oh boy, they're so small and tiny. And because I had, um, I bought basically four adults, right? And I had them for two months in accidentally when I was changing water in my guppy tank I saw this little 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 baby right here like swimming around I was like oh my god and then the more I saw things I'm like oh there's more so what I did was I scooped up all the adult guppies because I'm sure they were munching on them for protein and if I figure I would move them out and I got a DM over on Instagram, I think, and they're like, well, they do well outdoors. So I'm like, I'm always looking for companion for Midakas. And right now I only have the Ram's horn. It's a symbiotic relationship with the Ram's horn with the Midakas. Midakas, they don't have stomachs, right? So they, they poop out what they eat in about an hour or two. So there's a lot of nutrients left in their poop. So the snails consume that poop and they break it down, and they poop it out and they break it into a source where it's easier for the bacteria to break up, beneficial bacteria. So I'm hoping the shrimps will do the same thing where they will consume the poop from the medakas or whatever they disposed and poop it out to make it into a source where it's easy for the bacteria to consume and to break out so all right by the way the metal medaka today is uh this is an ibanez pgm 200 this is this is actually paul gilbert's uh to be with you mr big <laughs> Uh, he had two of these prototypes. This is one of them. So, like, Pat Pro's PGM 200. This is a real, real thing. Basswood body, rosewood neck, maple neck. But this is that's the metal. Of, let me just take a real quick sip. By the way, the best beer of the day is the beer that I am. I just got back from Nick's. Uh, Sundays I go to Nick's in Pacifica, California, to almost south of San Francisco. Um, but the best beer of the day is the one that I am able to consume in front of these beautiful Neo Caradina shrimps. And hopefully they'll have a symbiotic relationship with the Madakas that I have. So, real quick sip. Oh yeah, it tastes so much better when I have all you Medaka heads next to me. So, let me zoom out a little bit. All right. So they have been acclimated to this water over here. drip style and I'm, I'm going to put them in here um i originally set these like five gallon uh five and a half gallon um tanks up because i wanted to experiment with the medalkas right 95 percent of the medalkas are outdoors natural style let mother nature take care of things but uh they're there's certain things that I wanted to kind of observe indoors and uh, I figure I would start testing something so 
Um, right here, I have three five gallon, five and a quarter gallon, or half gallon. Uh, but emergency style, um, since I found these shrimps, wandering around with their offsprings, I just set this thing up quick. So, before I do that, uh, what is this environment? It's five and a half gallon aqualon tank that I got on sale at Petco for about eleven dollars each. Uh, this one right here is a pump. Um, usually on eBay, I get these on eBay. They're about. It turns out to be a dollar fifty a piece. The thing I like about these sponge filters, it's they're not coarse, you know, they're the old school style sponge. So it doesn't suck up the fry, it doesn't suck up the eggs and all that stuff. So I like using these. And you could easily, uh, what I do is I just have a bunch of these sponges in an ongoing aquarium. Why do I do that? Because in time they'll the beneficial bacteria grows on them, right? So when you're starting up a new tank like this one, I just put water in this tank yesterday. The bacteria is all alive and good because those are used sponges from another tank. Uh, this is a Anubius Nena. I think they're the petite style, so they're, they're really small. I had this sucker for about two and a half years and I got it when it was really tiny. I think it quadrupled in size, but it took about two years. And hopefully the shrimps, these Neocaridinos, will enjoy munching on that stuff, so. All right, so let me see. Let me start with this one. It's again, it's been acclimated for 24 hours, drip style. I'm going to introduce them into the space. I've never done this before with shrimp, so let's see. Let's see. Okay. All right. Where are they? So I have a bare bottom tank over here. Um, I like keeping my tanks bare bottom just because I could see, but I think they have enough foliage if they want to hide within the crevices. And I put the ceramic, um, I got this in Japan about like seven years ago. This is about $1.50. Um, I don't know about all you folks, but like whenever I introduce something into a tank, man, feels so good these are blue dreams that I purchased locally from a new store in San Bruno California I bought four to begin with and I only found three of the adults so maybe one of them disappeared and then they left me with some little babies that I, I discovered yesterday, so. They look like they're doing okay. Again, I have no experience with shrimps. But again, I'm always looking for a symbiotic, like, partner relationship with the Medakas that I have, so. If these are able to survive within the same water, it, this is basically D 
dechlorinated tap water that I have here in Pacifica. pH is low, the GH is low. I know you're supposed to have a little bit more GH for shrimp, but we'll see how they do in this setup. All right. It doesn't look like they are experiencing any type of shock to this new environment, so. The bunch that I got today, this morning, I think yesterday I got about like 10. This morning I got maybe another 10 more. A lot smaller. So I'm just gonna it's time for you guys to have fun in your in your new environment per se. They are so small. All right. Let's see how they do. Oh boy. Let's go, little. My little dreams. so hard to see them. All you shrimp experts out there, can you guide me? Um, I just want to find some fellas that could uh, have a symbiotic relationship with the Madakas here, so. Again, Neocaridinas compared to the Caridinas, it, it seems like you could have Similar parameters to Medakas and all that. And seems like they do okay. They're pretty hardy. So. Hopefully I'll be back next week. And I won't have to report back saying that. Unfortunately they did not do well. So we'll see. They're awesome looking yeah. This one has a little bit of an orange top, so maybe this one is not the one to choose to breed. My understanding is a lot of the orange ones turned darker blue and they ended up basically selecting the bluer looking ones to get rid of the orange. That one, there's a little bit of the orange on the head, so. That one probably is not the best one to be um, breeding, but at this point I only have like three adults, so we'll see how the juveniles turn out. And uh, awesome style, so. Okay, we'll do it again. Again, Medical Metal style. Uh, it's shrimp talk today, but uh, it's Medaka talk, right? Like, Finding a partner for a symbiotic relationship with the fellow Medakas and it's all it's all good in the hood. So we'll do it again next time. Come by, let me take a real quick sip before it. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Let's see if I could zoom in here. The Daruma Miyuki's.
my favorite. So, all right. So I live on Instagram dot com uh, Medaka Metal Style and uh, or Medaka Metalu and uh, subscribe, subscribe. Leave a comment below, and then um, if you like it, just give me a thumbs up, and we'll do it again next time. Come back to your channel. Have a very nice rest of the Sunday. All right, out.